Bonjour everyone, welcome to a little Sunday night stream here on the Mac Buyer Channel TV. Just going to break down, well I'm not really actually going to break down much of yesterday's game, I'm going to look forward. Less of the past, more of the future. Enjoy your present, well we're kind of going to come, but hopefully we'll enjoy the future. Norwich on Tuesday, that's what we're going to look for. And I'm also going to not be all doom and gloom, right? The video, you know, it is a make or break week. I think we all recognise that and realise just how huge this week is for Newcastle in terms of trying to stay up, needing to get wins, needing to get points on the board. 13 games now without a win. The only team in England. 92 teams in every tier of this country have got a win apart from us. Unbelievable, unbelievable stuff that we still haven't got a W on the board, but we won't get a better chance to get said W apart from against the teams in and around us. And that is who we are playing in the next week. It is a make or break week for Newcastle United and Eddie Howard and Manas Lee and the Saudis and Newcastle fans in terms of Premier League survival because I'll bring up later on, I put a tweet out and it's on our Instagram and Facebook as well about um, the teams that have made great escapes before. So teams that have made great escapes in the Premier League will go, we'll have a look at that soon. So we can finish on the stream with a bit of optimism instead of just uh, doom and gloom and thinking it's game hour already. It's not, there's still time. But we'll uh, we'll look at that in a minute. What I will talk about first is Norwich. I'm going to get my predicted lineup on the screen as well at the end, and pop yours in the comments to let me know who you think should play because there's plenty of changes to make on Tuesday. Forced changes, forced changes to make for Tuesday because uh, many a yellow card the other day. Lascelles, thank God, is missing on Tuesday. He's, he's been missing for years, to be fair, hasn't he? But he's actually not going to be on the pitch on Tuesday. Fantastic news. Can I stand the bloke? Honestly, can I stand him? My right, my match reaction the other day, yesterday after the Arsenal game, saying he's the worst player in the league. He is. He's, he's by far the worst player in the Premier League, I'm telling you now. And he's captain of our club. We're, we're too far gone for this now. We're too big for this now. Well, it could be championship, but we're the richest club in the world. We can't be having Jamal Lascelles. We can't talk house that. Bring them in in January for now. Give the on-one to Debrafka or Wilson or bloody anybody. Just take it away from ourselves. He's the worst player on the pitch, man. Oh, don't want to do a Sunday night rant, to be honest. Ah, Craft was shot and says, Keith, there, get your comments coming in. I'll catch up with them in a minute. Um, please like the video and subscribe if you haven't already. And yeah, Norwich, Tuesday, massive, massive game. Changes. Lascelles is suspended. Matt Ritchie is suspended. And I think I might be missing one more. No, I don't think I am, actually. I think it is just Lascelles and Ritchie that's suspended. Wilson is one yellow card away from being suspended as well, so it's massive that he didn't get booked at Arsenal because, by God, we need him this week. We need goals this week. We need points this week. <clears throat> I'm going to get into my predicted lineup soon because I see people saying there about who should uh, replace who, so we'll, we'll have a talk about that in a minute. But Norwich, Norwich on, on Tuesday, and I watched match the day last night, and obviously that's no standard just to judge them off on a five-minute clip, but they were, they were really, really good yesterday. I mean, Dean Smith's went in there. And he's doing a brilliant job so far. They're looking much, much better. Much more compact. They're not leaking goals as much now. But Norwich's problem is scoring goals. Pookie missed a sitter yesterday. But they dominated Wolves at home. Dominated a Wolves side that was six in the league before they went to Carroll Road yesterday. And Norwich should have won yesterday. That should have been three wins for them. Because obviously they won. Dean Smith won his first game in charge last weekend. And then Farkey won before he got the sack just a couple hours later. So... Norwich isn't going to be an easy game. It really isn't going to be an easy game. Norwich on Tuesday, like, um, I'm shitting myself already. I actually am shitting myself already because it is huge. Because we're six points off now. And we, 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 kind, of, we kind of keep doing this. We kind of keep being draw Castle United. We kind of be losing games like yesterday. We, we need to start winning games, man. It's December next week. And we haven't won a game yet. 13 games in. <sighs> It's it's massive, like it's really huge. And I'm gonna get the stat up at the end, like I said, of teams that have made great escapes. Hopefully it doesn't come to that. But it's shown that it can be done. But let's hope it doesn't come to that because we need to get a we need to get the we need to get a win on Tuesday. Nothing nothing but a win. Nothing but a win. I'll take another four three classic, like the championship days. It won't be good for the old ticket, but it'll definitely be good for the table. We need three points. I don't care if it's an ugly one no win, or if it's an entertaining four three. We just need we just need three points. Big time need three points. Norwich will be thinking the same though. Norwich will be coming here thinking oh, playing bottom of the league, yeah, without a win. Chance for us to keep going, yeah. Chance for us to keep going. Dean Smith, unbeaten. 
<sighs> we need a win, like we need a win. Plenty of changes to be made. Let's uh, have a quick look at what you are saying. There you see, I, I was I was really disappointed with yesterday because it was the first time in years of going to the Emirates I was looking forward to going and I thought we could create chances, I thought we'd score goals. We just didn't do that. Again, like like you are saying in the comments there, um, people are saying that, you know, and I said it me thing, that it, did, it was no different from how to, to Bruce or, or Jones really yesterday. It was, uh, I thought we could have went for it a lot more, I didn't think Arsenal were great, they scored two good goals, but two shocking bits of defending from us allowed them to score them goals. So I think we could have done more, but never mind, that game's gone now. Big shout out to Andrew Grange. Thanks very much for that donation, mate. Much appreciated. Do we need 12 to 14 points by January? I would say so. I mean, what's that? 3 6 9 that would require. Well, if you look at it, wins, what, three or four wins? I'm not sure if it will. We should get two wins next week, really. So we should get six points next week. Six points, six points, and nothing else next week. Like against Norwich and Burnley, it has to be six points next week. It just has to be. We can't afford anything less. We really can't. So that would set one away. But then obviously the fixtures get tougher, don't they? Leicester are we after that though? If we win our two home games next week and we go to Leicester, we've got actually got a good record at the King Power. Um and they haven't been great this season. Four two a day against Watford. I think we could we could get some of there as well, to be honest. It's just over Christmas. I can't see we're beating Man City or Man United. Um, especially without Ollie being at Man United anymore. But we've beat Man City before. But that's I want to focus on uh, just this week coming up, really. But I, I would say we definitely <laughs> Need to start getting there. Like I say, we'll look at um, other teams that have escaped from perilous positions before in the Premier League with very little points. But um, Almiron, that's a good shout. Actually, I didn't even think about putting him in against uh, Norwich in my predicted lineup. to be honest. Richie Lascelles is a Sunderland level. Shout out Callum. Right, what I'm going to do now actually is plenty of comments coming in. Appreciate it, everyone. Uh... I think I'll I'll drop out. But you'll still be here, is. <clears throat> and we'll get up my predicted lineup for the game. Let us know if you can still hear us in the chat because it would be a disaster if you can't. But uh, there it is. There's my lineup. Let us know what you think of that. That well, it's it's you know when when Kate does these videos and he's too busy tomorrow to do one, so that's why I've jumped in. I don't um I don't know whether I do this, whether I always go for well obviously the name is predicted lineup to so say what you think the mind is gonna do or what I'm gonna do. So this is what I this is a bit of a mix to be honest. This is a bit of a mix because I've made some big changes there, but changes that are required because of the suspensions. If someone could uh just let us know that you just cancel yours in the chat, that would be lovely. So uh yeah, Kieran Clark, I see he's already saying there, can't be also Clark, to be honest. No, neither can I. Neither can I. Where's Fernandez? Where's Fernandez? Do you know what I mean? Surely free free Freddy. Free Freddy. Free Freddy. Get Freddy out of the cold. Yeah, get Freddy out of the cold. Shout out Matt who said yeah, he can he has. Fernandez has got to come back in tomorrow, but I don't think he can I don't think he will. I think he'll play a clock. And Kraft was it's just not a footballer, is he? Let's be real, he's just not a footballer. Kraft is just not a footballer. But he'll be there. On Tuesday night, I reckon, and so will Clark. I mean, if Fernandez can't get in when Lascelles is forced out, and obviously Shaw will play again, then I'm worrying what's he done. What's he done? Because he must have done something to Jones. He must have done something to Jones because I thought how would come in if it was a spat with Bruce or whatever. I thought how would come in and surely put Fernandez on the bench and that. But really, Kraft. Kraft, man. No, but that's who I think will be the back three. I'm so glad to see Debravka back in net. He was uh, huge for us the other day. If it wasn't for him, it would have been 2 0 at half time already. I brought in an interesting choice there on both sides Murphy and Lewis. Lewis to start his first game of the season, I think, against his previous side, Norwich. We were probably still laughing the tits off that they got 15 million for him. Although I do think he could be worth it. Huge potential to make it, but we haven't seen anywhere near that price tag yet. And then I brought in Isaac Hayden. Because Joe Willick still played for Arsenal the other day. He still played for Arsenal all season. I haven't seen him do nout. I barely seen him touch the Ballon games. The one game he was all right was Watford and he missed missed a very good chance. So 
He's been shite this season. Big, big disappointment. He's been carrying injuries, but there was no excuse against Arsenal. Wasn't in it at all. Shelby has actually been our best player since how he came in. Never, ever thought I'd say that. Because Joe Linton didn't do as much against Arsenal. Um, so, yeah, I've got Murphy and Lewis on the flanks there, which I'd be excited to see. Two lads with a lot of pace and can get forward. So, I have a bit of that. I think Fraser didn't play much football and he, he played the majority of the game yesterday. So, I'd maybe rest him and give Murphy a chance, who I always think is, does a job, especially going forward when he gets a chance. Um, Shelby Hayne in the middle, Lewis out there. Interested to give Lewis a chance. I think we, we've got to see what he can do because without Richie, we have to make the change, obviously. And I think it's the right change because Richie's defence is just embarrassing. Yes, he may create chances, but he's defending is absolutely atrocious. So that's the change I would make. Then the front three picks itself, doesn't it? Julian on, on the right there, Wilson down the middle, and St. Maximin on the left. We need to see a lot more of them because those three were very quiet against Arsenal. So we're going to win against Norwich. Them need to turn up like they did against Brentford. Like they did against Brentford, to be fair. Obviously, Wilson had one cleared off the lane against Brentford. Saint scored. Juliet unscored. So, yeah. The, I mean, we don't have to worry about the front three and the keeper. For me, it's the defence and the midfield, isn't it? Realistically, um, it's just not good enough. But when you look at Norwich's team, arguably the worst in the Premier League, on paper they've been playing well the last couple of weeks but we've got to get something man we've got to get not get something we need to get three points and I think that team could definitely do that another thing you could look at doing would be maybe mixing it up 4-3-3 three, three, maybe bringing Almi run in somewhere um, so I'll, I'll play in a back four instead of that 3-4-3 three, three, just go for a flat back four and have Manquillo maybe you could have Manquillo Shaw, Fernandez, and Lewis that would probably be my best shout to be honest with you or a 4 2 3 1, like you are saying here. Um, yeah, back four. I'd be in favour of a back four, to be honest. Um, 4 3 3, you got that four at the back. Everyone calling for Fernandez to return. Iron Man, remember when we used to call him Iron Man? Now he can't even get on the fucking bench. Can't even do a Forest Gump now. He's in from Iron Man to Forest Gump. Bloody hell. So yeah, there's there's my team anyway. Well, I think how we'll go with, but it's going to be an interesting one because you could make a lot of changes with obviously only playing two days, three days after the Arsenal game and having a couple of suspensions. So it'll be interesting to see who he picks. Um, we'll jump out of that. So you've seen that. Get back to the game now. Then, like I said, it's not going to be an easy game. I'm going to go really hopeful that it's a two-one win. I really hope we get a 2 1 win on Tuesday night, but I'll take it either way it comes. But it's not going to be easy. Norwich have looked better. They've got more confidence in us. The pressure is going to be on the players. I hope St. James Park is rocking under the lights on Tuesday night and we can get the win. I really do. How's first game, obviously, in the dugout at home for Newcastle? And I'll be doing a live watch along. So can't make it up Newcastle this week, obviously, during the week. Not possible. Been down here on Southampton at uni, so all the Burnley game actually. So the next couple of games, I've got some live watch alongs back for you. So stay tuned for them. If you want to at the game, tune in. Obviously, the game's on Amazon Prime as well, but we'll be doing a live watch along. So uh tune in to that Tuesday night. And before I go, what did they give me prediction? I two one. I see three nils in there. Be out of the moon with that, like I'd be out of the moon with anything, but one nil, one nil last minute. Don't care. Actually, last minute. That'll be painful. Um but I, flat back four, Manku and Lewis had to shout another 3 0 in there. Before I go, so it's not all negative. Yes, it is a huge week. It is make or break. It is. We do need to win. Really do. Because we need, we need, we kind of, we need that monkey off we're back. We need the, the no wins off we're back. We need three points. We need that first win. We need to start closing the gap on this, on 17th place. Already six points off. But here's the thing I put out on our socials about an hour ago or so. There's some examples of some Premier League great escapes. I just realised I haven't clicked the share the screen button. That would help Rentney, wouldn't it? So you can see what I'm fucking talking about. So we'll, uh, we'll do that. It's been a while since I've done one of these. A couple of weeks since the old, uh, since the streams, after I was doing one every day with the takeover. Um, right then. So hopefully you can see this now. 
there it is. I'm going to sip my cherry coke, and you're just going to read through some examples of some Premier League greatest gifts. And there's even some more. There's even Wigan and West Brom and some other ones. Had to put the mappers in there, unfortunately, because, well, it shows if they can do it, we can do it, doesn't it? If Bloody Fat Sam and the Mappens can do it, hopefully how we can do it. So, West Ham there, 10-point deficit. Look at Tevez. Look at them days. This is Mark Noble's there. Mark Noble's a mortal, isn't he? Looks fucking 52 and still being in the Premier League. So, West Ham in 2006-2007 turned around a 10-point deficit with just nine games remaining. Controversial as well, the last game of the season, wasn't it? So, I think people were saying Tevez and that shouldn't have been playing for them. Dodgy deals. I would Ari Redknapp at Portsmouth for 05 06 was eight points adrift with 10 games to go. So you look at the look at those two examples already there. Those teams were further away than what we are now, and we've got 25 games to go. I put 26 there in the tweet, but that's actually wrong because I'm not taking into account yesterday's game. So 25 games, six points off. Puts it in perspective, doesn't it? We'll still be positive. Keep the faith, right? Keep the faith. Probably won't say this on Tuesday. Night. Keep the faith. Keep the faith, right? If these teams did it. Ten points there, West Ham with nine games to go. We're six points with 25 games to play. There's plenty of points to play. Obviously, these teams didn't have the January back in that week and get as well, that week and spend. Um, obviously, the main thing being that we need to make sure we're not too far adrift because nobody will come to it. But the Mackens, like I said, were seven points adrift with six games left and they had to play Man U, Man City and Chelsea all away and they still stayed up. So stranger things have happened. Fulham only won four games out of 33 games all season. And then they went to win on the four of the last five. So you can even go for a mad little run at the end. Wigan did something similar. Wigan under Martinez were down and out. And then they won nine of the last 10 games or something daft like that. And picked up 21, 20, no, not nine out of 10, but they picked up 21 points in the last month or so. Um, nearly winning every game. I think it was seven in a row or something. And they'd actually got more points than the... Um, the league leaders at the time in that month. So, stranger things have happened. You can go on a run. I think Newcastle can go on a run, even if it's a three-game run. Even if we beat um, we beat Norwich, we beat Burnley and we beat Leicester. You know, that, that can carry through that. That can carry through big time. So, I think yeah. we can get that. We can get that bounce. We can, we, like I said, we just need that pressure, that weight off our shoulders. We need it off. We need the first win. We need the three points. And the players need to stop. But even because of they go week after week without winning games and they see the um, talk on Sky Sports News and the pressure on socials and they see the, the Premier League table, they'll be doubting themselves now. Do you know what I mean? So you need that first win. And the last one there, which I like to finish off on, is in 2014-15, bottom at Christmas, seven points adrift with any games to play, went on to win the Premier League the season after. Stayed up that year, Leicester. Ranieri came in the year after and they went on to roof record the greatest Premier League moment in history, the underdog story. Leicester in the next season went on to win the league, Premier League. So relegation battle to win in the league. Not going to say it's going to happen twice, but uh, <laughs> it might do. Might it? It might do. Imagine that relegation battle to Premier League. If Leicester can do it, Newcastle can do it. Yeah? Let's hope so. Let's hope we just stay up first of all. That'd be nice. Um... Let's have a quick look at what you were just saying before I end this stream there. This is the thing, though, isn't it? Like, I mean, you look at Fulham and that there, who had all them games and could afford all them losses. I'm not too sure we will this, this season because it's so competitive and it gets uh, it gets so hard. There's there's much... It's, it's so tighter now in the Premier League. There's that much quality you're knocking about. I think Anderson got injured the other day in the under 23s, didn't he? So I'm not sure how serious that is. Um, need a couple of wins. Oh, well, I haven't seen Leeds' games, but I think Leeds will struggle anyway. I think Leeds are in the re right in the relegation mix. Me, it's just not gelling for them this season at all. So I, I think uh, I think Leeds will be right in amongst it all season. To be honest, they could go down. Oh, Gallic for the first time in 40 years. In Johnny Stone, mate. Let's hope we bring back some good luck. 3-2 Callum. Yeah, could be an interesting game. The thing is, Norwich don't score many goals, like, but Grant Hanley. Grant Hanley was at Newcastle in the championship. He's doing bits for Norwich, like Captain of Norwich. Quality defender. I've got Cruel coming back, obviously. So I think it'll be a close game, like. It'll be a close game. 
everyone's confident. Everyone's still confident, even after not winning in 13 games. Everyone's still confident. 3-1, 3-0, 3-0. Um, aye, and everyone's saying that what we get to a back four, back four, back five, back six, back two. Don't care as long as it's three points, to be honest with you. I really don't. I really don't. We really need three points. We need that first win on Tuesday. Pray and we'll get it. What is a huge week for Newcastle with Norwich at home and Burnley at home to try and close the gap on 17th place to try and stay up this year. All right, cheers for watching, everyone. Subscribe to my Pie Channel TV. Tune in Tuesday night, 7.20pm for a live watch-along of the Norwich game. I think Keg's going to the game, so he'll have a vlog. I'll be here for the live watch-along. See you then. Let's hope we can get this first bloody winner. Cheers for watching, everyone. I'll see you later.